Hi, my name is Dirk Westfall and this is an instructional video on how to make a surfboard. The first thing is uh, I would encourage everyone to really take seriously all the warnings and fine print on the materials related to health concerns and toxicity levels and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of these materials are really bad for people if they're treated the wrong way, so be really smart about that. The, I guess uh, at the very beginning it all starts with the foam blank. There's lots of different types of foam blanks available. The ones that are not available that used to be the standard are Clark, but there are other people filling in for them. So the first thing to do is to decide what surfboard you want to make and take that surfboard. In this case we're going to remake this surfboard. This is happens to be a surfboard that I made and it's a, a little bit experimental in the shape of its rails but I like its outline which is the general shape. So uh, the first thing you have to do it, in making a template is uh, copy your outline and we're going to do that now. So here's the board we're going to be copying. Find yourself a big piece of paper. In my case I used a what they call a waste piece of seamless photographic background paper that, ha that comes in long rolls which is what you need or something that works for you. So here's my board. You just try to hold it down. It's not really rocket science this part. And just trace the general shape trying to do whatever you think to do to keep it uniform. And so there's our shape from this board, that's the outline, and this, this board, we've gone and we've ordered a, a blank that corresponds to this blank. There's a lot left over, so what I may do is try to expand this one and make it larger so we can sort of maximize every bit of foam on this blank. So that's what we'll do. But, so here we have our outline and what I've done is I've gone to the store and bought myself a nice thin piece of aluminum and drilled some holes through it so I can pin it down on the outline so I can make a nice cut. There's probably a million different ways to come up with a way to make a nice cut, but this is what I did. And this part, it is critical to make a nice cut. I'm going to have to answer the door now, so um, we'll get back to this. Okay, I'm back. That was the FedEx guy, and he actually knocked on the wrong door. So... I'm pinning this down to get a nice continuous curve that corresponds to this board I had, have. And you kind of have to futz around with it. And the more you do it like anything, the more you'll figure out what works for you. I mean, can you believe that? It can't be the FedEx guy again. So that was just the kid. Uh, so we're back here, we put this down, and then you use whatever kind of cutting instrument you're comfortable with and cut out your outline, the outside edge. So you do that, and this is, it's vital that this is perfect because any mistake you make here, the unevenness will be magnified when you lay this on the blank and cut your form out of your blank. 
So go ahead and cut this out. And then you put, find a straight edge, because what you're trying to do is really just create half the thing. And you lay that down the middle. And again, you just cut that down right along the center perfectly like so. And then you end up with this, which is a template. And then If it's not obvious, you put that on your blank, and it's the mirror effect to create something that is completely symmetrical because that's really hard. And you trace it, You pin it down. We'll do that in the booth when we get ready to shape. You lay that on here, you flip it over, and that's going to be your surfboard. Can I make coffee in the background? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is important. I forgot to mention this. This is, these are the, the fins from this board we're recreating, and it's very important to make as many notations as possible on your template while you have that board. If you can keep the board while you're making your new board, that's even the best, but sometimes you can't do that. So you mark exactly where the fins are, and you take different notations about how thick it is and where it is, but we'll talk more about that later, because I've got to answer the phone. Um, sorry about that. Um, I want to, oh, sorry, I have to start over. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Uh, before I go any further, I want to introduce my assistant, the kid. Okay, so this is, um, we didn't get to this with the interruption there with the phone. It's, it's important to take these notations with the fins. That is actually a very important important part, like a, a fraction of an inch can make a big difference to how the surfboard performs. So what we've done on this template is we've made a line where these fins go. Those are where the fins attach. Let me have a fin just for uh, demonstration's sake. Those would fit in like so. And typically what happens is the outside edge of the fin goes to the very edge of the board. And, and what you want is for this to line up basically pointing in like about roughly five degrees from the center of the board, the center being the stringer. And there's like, you know, the more you get into it, the more precise things get. Like on long board, you have a fin in the middle, and then two side biting fins, or this board potentially, these are the fin plugs. You could, you could potentially put one back here if you wanted to be experimental, or there's a variety of configurations, but I would suggest not getting too experimental on your first board, just kind of copy whatever it is you're trying to copy, unless you have a really far out idea about how to change things. And now we're going to cut out our outline and begin the next phase, which is the cutting, sanding, shaping phase.